Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. What in the f did I get myself into? This is a freaking hole. Who cares? All right, welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, we are gonna be doing a digging test using the Kimron XH26D and the Kimron RH14G. The 26 is a diesel unit and the one ton here is a gas unit. Now, if this is your first time visiting the channel and you were interested in either one of these Kimron machines, I made full on dedicated videos for each one of these when I got them, talking about all the specifics, all the dimensions, capabilities, capacities, the operation of them, everything. So if you want more info, I highly suggest you check out those videos. And if you want pricing and availability, you could check out microtraco.com. That is K&R Equipment. They also have a YouTube channel and they are located in Muskogee, Oklahoma. You can also check out parsleyequipment.com. They are located just east of Indianapolis, Indiana. And I will leave both of those websites and k &R Equipment's YouTube channel links down in the description. And there is another dealer in Paducah, Kentucky, I believe. I don't have the information on that one, but I'm sure you could look it up and find it. Google is an amazing tool. Some people say I'm a tool and I would have to agree with them. I'm, I'm definitely a tool. Oh well. Beefy. Okay, as far as the digging test goes, there's really no great way to do it besides just digging, but what I think I'm gonna do to kind of actually have something to compare to, I'm gonna dig for 15 minutes with the one ton, see how big of a pile we can come up with, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the three ton. Obviously, the three ton is gonna dig more. Pretty obvious. Bigger bucket, more power, I mean, come on. But it at least gives us just something to compare to, kind of put it in perspective. The other digging test I would like to do is just kind of dig a straight line and see how deep we can actually get these things to go. Now, right down here, I have posted the advertised digging depth for the XH26D, the three ton. And maybe right, uh, right here, I will post the digging depth advertised for the one ton unit. Now we are on a bit of a grade right here. It's probably a good four to five foot drop where we're gonna be digging. So I'll do my best to get an accurate digging depth once we get to that point. Now I'll show you the plan here and why we're doing this. I'm not just digging a random hole on my property just to make a video. I need a hole. <laughs> that didn't sound good, but you know what? It makes sense. You can go either way with that and it, it's a true statement. Right in this area right here, you might recognize this area. This is where we had the little guy. Uh, we had this one pulling up some stumps and all that. That was like two or three videos ago. Pretty good video, but right in this area, it's very low, very uneven, and I need this space for my wood yard. I need an area where I can split wood, stack wood. Uh, I could store logs and get them ready to cut them into rounds and split them. So I need this to be flat and it is not. Um, this whole thing is kind of on a grade, but I'm trying to do my best, you know, to get a good level surface. So we're gonna dig a massive hole right here bury a bunch of organic junk. I got some clean fill. We're gonna bury all that in there and then that's gonna allow us to get some soil where we can continue to build this up. Oh, damn it. Didn't go down though. So I know these aren't the best conditions to be digging in because it is freaking muddy and sloppy and one of the machines is clean. The other one's already filthy, so I don't care about that one. So what I have here is a uh, little piece of lean to and another piece lean to next to it full of a bunch of crap just a heaping mound of straw and a whole bunch of other that i don't want to burn it because it's just a smoky nasty mess when you burn it i want to pull all that out of there throw it in the hole and bury it because i need to clean out these two buildings so i can start storing firewood in them we use our wood stove we have two wood stoves in our cabin and we burn all winter long we are out of wood and if i have any chance of having any firewood next year dry and ready i need to start splitting it right meow I think I said meow instead of now. I spent some time out here last night and I pulled a bunch of crap that was in there out, some dividers. This was like an old dog kennel. It's got a nice concrete floor in it. There's no cracks in it or nothing. So that's gonna be great wood storage. And then this one's about probably 16 to 18 foot deep. I mean, there's some good storage there. So I wanna get this cleaned out and start stacking firewood. <sighs> I'm fix that squeak. Oh, there's a piece of welding wire. You know, these hacks. Now, before we get started on this video, well, we already started the video. Before we start on the dig test, I wanna clear up a couple of things that were brought up about this little one ton machine. Two or three videos ago, we used this one ton to go down in this area and dig up some tree stumps. 
it was bouncing around a little bit. It was a little bit tippy. I was lifting some heavy objects, some big stumps, big clumps of mud, all that good shit. So there was an abundance of people in the comments that suggested that this machine needs a wider track base, a larger counterweight, uh, that the blade needs to stick out further for more stability. And I just want to clear that up because they do offer those things on larger machines. That's the whole idea. You know, you have a small machine here for a reason. If you want something with a wider track base and a bigger counterweight, they offer other models that are larger. This machine is small, for a reason. It's narrow for a reason. It's lightweight for a reason. Any excavator that you get on, the hydraulics are always going to be more powerful than what the machine is capable and what the weight can actually handle and how stable it is. You would never want it the other way around where the machine is more stable than what the hydraulics can handle. It's a matter of being a good operator, knowing your machine's capabilities, knowing your machine's limits, and not going outside of them. Did I say machine? Machine. It is a machine. You coming out here? I forgot something, I think. You forgot something, you think? Well, I think it's out here. Yeah, I see it in my phone. <laughs> you couldn't have said I forgot my phone? <laughs> Don't fake laugh. I hate when people fake laugh. All right, so that's my spiel. Do you want a bigger counterweight, a bigger track base? Well, here you go. There it is. But you're not going to fit this one through a three-foot fence. And you're probably not going to haul this one with your Toyota Tacoma. Okay, let's start digging. <laughs> she knows how to run the oven though. Have you gotten one scoop yet? Huh? Have you gotten one scoop? That was already on there before. The right one, the right one, turn the right one sideways. There you go. What, you're done? I don't want to break it, then we can't run it out. Yeah, it really gets things jiggling. Oh my, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh God, we'll yeah, fill in There's holes everywhere. Have my tape measure? Tape measure? Yeah, it should be somewhere on the bench or I don't know, somewhere. Really sticky hard play. Thank you. Oh, God, I'm falling that hole. All right, here comes the Keystone girl. 
Do you have it on? Yeah. No. Well, put it on. You should know how to put this little fuzz hole on oh, here by now. Oh, that thing? Yeah. I've never done it before. Remember we used this last night? <laughs> take what's it all. <laughs> okay, yeah, the like Keystone a... girl finally showed up to help. <laughs> I'm here. I'm guessing she locked the kids up in the basement. <laughs> they are. They're building and a fort. I think that I lost some of the footage at the beginning. I checked my camera and it was off all of a sudden. I don't know why. You can kind of see in comparison to the Keystone girl how big of a pile of dirt here we got in 15 minutes. Pretty good size. And honestly, yeah. at the bottom of that hole, it was some really, really hard clay. It was still kind of dry. Yeah. What? <laughs> you could tell it looked dry down there. It's a different color. How do you get in there? Huh? Get in there and feel if it's dry. If I can't get back out, no dinner. All right. So when you were operating it, how how did the joysticks feel in your hand? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. That was that felt fine. Yeah. It was. The, you didn't give me any lessons, so I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But but they felt good in your hand. Yes. Felt natural. <laughs> yes. It did. <laughs> Well, let's uh, measure. Measure. What do I have this yeah. For? I'm gonna guess by my calculation. Hold on. What do you even? Do you even know what you're measuring? <laughs> How right. deep the hole is. So we're on a little bit of a grade here. Honestly, I this is like freaking concrete in the bottom of this. It is extremely hard. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not down there. I'll take your word. But just to the bottom of the tracks, we're at like four foot right here. And I think this is advertised to dig around six foot deep, maybe. And I definitely had a lot further down I could go, but it's just, it's too hard. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to be able to get a very good depth idea on this thing right here. So anyways, let's move on to the three ton <laughs> machine. Machine? What? <laughs> Which is supposed to dig how far? 300 feet deep. Whoa. That's the Armageddon. How deep is it in there? Want to mm -hmm. measure? Yeah, I do. Ooh. You're three and a half, four inches. Whoa. All right, let's give this baby a whirl. Oh, yeah, buddy. All right, we're going to get in there a little further. This is a bit further. Hey, Siri. Start 15 minute timer. Starting timer. turning a little bit more than we were with the smaller machine. Yeah, that's like three scoops with that little machine. Oh yeah. Lots of roots. What's going on here? This thing is just so smooth and powerful. Freaking love it. And it'll hog some, some dirt.
straight up rock. That's time. Done. All right, that is the end of the 15 minutes. You can see, it's kind of hard to put it in perspective here. This pile is probably four to five times the size of that pile. And you can tell by the hole, actually this little log fell in there, but that hole is three or four foot deep. And this one is significantly larger and deeper, of course, to be expected. And you can kind of see how deep we are down there. And I was hitting straight up rock. I think that's like bedrock down there, or shale, but it is uh, not digging very easy through that rock. It was chipping away at it, but that's as deep as I want to go. I'm not going to sit here and try to tear up the teeth on that bucket. You can see on the excavator itself, there's definitely more room to go before you're down to that digging depth. But let's go ahead and see just how deep we got, or at least approximate. I will say this, this clay's a little sticky. It's wet, not as muddy as I thought it was going to be. All right, to the bottom of the tracks, I'd say we're pushing six foot right now. And I believe that this will go up to eight foot deep, which I definitely believe it will, because there's still quite a bit of reach to go down right here. We're just hitting rock, so that's it. Yeah, it's pretty deep. She's a deep one. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for the digging test. Unfortunately, I didn't get as accurate of a depth test as I wanted to on both machines, but I'd say it'll definitely go as deep as advertised no problem. Now the XH2060, this thing will hog some dirt and do it pretty quick. In 15 minutes, I was able to probably dig up a good 10 to 12 ton of dirt right there. I'm gonna continue digging the rest of the evening here. Probably gonna have the lights on. I don't wanna leave this thing dug up like this. Obviously it's dangerous. I wanna get it filled in with all the junk I need to put in here and get this thing covered up. So that is going to wrap it up for this one. I might include some more footage. Once I get this giant hole done, I'll throw it in after this. Otherwise, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. There will be plenty more videos using both of these excavators and plenty more of the Keystone Girl. She is coming up here in quite a few videos. I got some really good stuff coming. It just all takes time. So please like, subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. F***ing mud. Oh, Doug, One Eye Customs. 100% a pride tool. So if I'm gonna have any chance at firewood, ah, God, I hate talking. <laughs>